Hello. In this video, we're going to look at the basics of making pivot tables and pivot charts and looking at your paid search data. So I just took a keyword report right out of Google Ads. I selected the first two rows and deleted them because with Google Ads, your first two rows are just your date range and then the report type. If you need to remember the date range, then usually the easiest way is just to rename it. So this is keywords last 30 and then we could put the date in or something. Now what that does is allows us to select everything because our first two rows aren't there. So if we select everything, go to insert, click pivot table. We now have our first pivot table. Now the, the very first thing to consider is what is our key? How do we want to look at the data? So for instance, if we wanted to say, I wonder how these new match types are treating us. We can click on the match type, and that's our top row here is our match types. And then we could add things and say, well, what's my cost and my conversions for each of the match types? And we'll blow this up to make it easier to read. Now, if we have a bunch of rows, we can click the select button and say, I don't want to see the blanks and some of these others. And this would show us our cost and our conversion so forth by match type. So if we instead wanted to see, I really want to see my you know, conversions by each cost data. We can move these around very easily, drag them around. It, it, the most common one you're going to use in paid search is status, where we're going to add status as a filter. And then we could say let's select multiples and let's get rid of everything that's not enabled. So we'll unclick these. And then now we're only looking at enabled keyword data. And so the first part really is what do you want to analyze match types? How do you want to analyze it? So let's say we wanted it to wonder, I wonder how my conversion rate is going for each of these. Now this is where it gets trickier because conversion rate is already calculated information between your clicks and your conversions. So if we do sum of conversion rate, it just added up all the numbers. We can click and go to value field settings and say, well, show me my average conversion rate. Now again, the, these are really messy numbers. Let's say in phrase match, I have one keyword that has one click, one conversion. And I have another keyword that's got 100 clicks and zero conversions. So that means I've got one ad, one keyword with a 100% conversion rate. I have another keyword with a 0% conversion rate. That'd make my, my conversion rate 50%, which is not really valid because the keyword with one click, one conversion should not be nearly counted as high as the other keyword that's got 100 clicks and zero conversions. So what we want to do instead, we're working with those types of numbers. So click on your pivot table data, make sure that's loaded, which it should be. Go in your fields, items, and sets and show calculated fields. These let you create your own formulas to use. So we could say this is my CAL calculated conversion rate. Now, next we're just going to choose the formula. So we could either scroll down or we could write it out, say all we want to know is our conversions. So let's double click that or click insert field, add the divided symbol, and again, any basic algebra formulas work, divided by our clicks, and we'll add clicks. We'll add that. So now we have our actual conversion rate. Now we don't want to see it this way, so let's select these fields. Let's go to format cells, percentage, and now we can see, well, our broad match is 1.9 percent conversion rate, our exact match is 2.6, and that's significantly different than the average. But our, our phrase match is the same. So we might think, why is it the exact same? Is that only one keyword? So we could find out. We could go back to our fields, add a keyword, do a count, and ah, oh, there we go. We only have one phrase match keyword, so of course it's the same. So this is a fairly simple way of just setting up pivot tables and then starting to look through, right, in this case, match types. It could be uh, different ways of looking at duplicate keywords, so forth. 
Now, another common pivot table analysis, I'm just going to make a new pivot table, insert pivot table, is for quality score. So you might say, well, how are my quality scores really doing? So we've got our row labels, we'll get rid of our, our blanks and experiments real quick. Then we might just want to say, well, I wonder what my cost and my conversions and maybe even my conversion values are by quality score. And we notice we've got no cost at one, which is good, but we must have an impression here because it's even showing up, right? There's no three, which means that it's not even in our chart. So then we might again say, well, I wonder how many keywords I have. And we'll just drag it over. Number of keywords I have by each quality score range. And just to make sure, let's make sure that our status is still a filter. So let's again only include enabled. Then if we want to see more data like clicks, then we can add more. And then we can look and say, well, the vast majority of our clicks are seven or higher even six and higher we have very few low ones so maybe we go look at a few keywords but our quality scores in such good shape it's not a big deal now we might want to look at this further right you want to say well how can we graphically show this to a client or our boss so let's just minimize this a little bit to give us more space and, and now we're going to go back up we're going to click pivot table analyze and this button pivot chart so we could just add a chart here and again let's make this a little bit larger easy to read now this is a whole lot of data by default so we want like this is too much to show we don't want to see all this information we really just want to see a um, number of keywords and how much they've spent so if we just remove this data oh, we got cost and we want number of keywords here too and that updates our chart dynamically makes it real easy. Now downside here is we're using a single access. It's really hard to see count of keywords when you've got you know one data that's 15,000 and one that's 44. So we could click on our chart, go to design for the chart design, click change chart type, go to combo, we can put one of these on a secondary access, and so now we've got our count of keywords as easy to read by the, the orange line, our cost is in blue. Now we can sort of see this data together that most of our keywords really fall in this seven range, isn't spending a lot of money. And, and we could you know, change this and say, well, instead of cost and number of keywords, maybe we really want to see just our conversions and where do our conversions come from? So we could very easily go back to our chart type combo secondary access and now we can see that the vast majority of our conversions are coming from the tens and the really big numbers here the high quality scores and then if we want to make this a little bit easier with the quality score numbers we could do go down to the the data table add the data table in so now we can see here is my quality score number here's how many keywords here's how many conversions and, and again there's a lot of ways that when you start thinking about it, it are very easy to create pivot table charts now once you've decided what you want to analyze how you want to visualize visualize it it's a good start but let's say we're, we're going to go back here to our data on match types and someone says, well, this is broad match, but don't you really have broad and modified broad? Well, that's a fair question. So again, we can go back to our data, select it all, just the top row, want to go to our data, click the filter. Now then we go to our keyword, and we're going to make a text filter, contains plus sign. Now these are our modified broad match words. So now we have all these keywords, but we filter by, by the plus sign. So now we're just going to change this to modified broad. And then if we double click on, on, on this information, we'll drag it all the way down. If we're to remove our filter, so we clear our filter, we'll see all the match types are preserved. 
Now we go back to our pivot table data. We go to our data source, we refresh all, and sometimes it may disappear because we're filtered. So we just want to again click to modify broad. Now we can see the update information. We have no broad match, we have modified broad. So with pivot tables, they're, they're super easy, right? First, get rid of anything on the top, select all, insert pivot table. Second, decide what is your going to be your primary key. Now we can have secondary items. We could say here's my quality score and I want to see you know how many match types I've got for every quality score number and, and what's my match type to quality score data. So we can start to build multiple thi multiple layers of information. We can split it out. Um, you can easily drag it around if you wanted to see your match type and how many conversions we have by match type in each quality score range. So easy to manipulate the data. The, the hard part's coming up with what do you want to see, right? Which is where you see a lot of good column information. We want to see the amount of spend and conversions and clicks by quality score range. So we can see are we overall doing well or not. If we're not doing well, we may need to think about organization a lot of work. If we are doing well, maybe we just look at a few keywords. Our match types. If our match types are doing fairly well, and we could even do a, a comparison time frame between now and previous, if they haven't changed much, we may not want to look at some of the new queries. We don't want to go crazy about it. If we see our data has gotten much worse, then we're going to go look and say, okay, let's dig into where these downfalls are coming from and, and put a plan in place. But pivot tables, super easy to use once you've gotten started with them. It's a matter of just getting started and it really takes selecting your data, clicking a button, manipulating how you want to view it and you could drag and move things around all you want to to see how it, it visually works for you. Um, and when you're done, all right, save them, put them into graphs if you want to. You can order the data if you click under the pivot tables. You can use a lot of the various you know, Excel features so we could order by one, we could filter, etc. So hopefully that'll get everyone started on really getting into the power that pivot tables can bring in analyzing paid search accounts.